Stand with me if you will this morning. Turn to the book of Luke chapter 16. <laughs> You know, I titled this message this morning, uh, but when I got here, I had to change it. <laughs> you know, God works in mysterious ways. The first title of this message was No Way Out. But then God changed my mind. Mm -hmm. Told me, said, we got a decision to make. There is a way out. Yeah. My, my, my. Luke chapter, uh, if I can get there. Luke chapter 16. Get my eyes on there. <laughs> Lift your hands this way and repeat after me. Let the words of my mouth, Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable, be acceptable in thy sight, in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer, my redeemer. Amen. 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 Luke chapter sixteen. I'm gonna be uh, in. Uh, 16 and go from 19 to 31. So if you bear with me a little bit this morning, we're going to read. In verse 19 it says this. It says, There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared and fared some. I can't say that word. I know it, but I can't say it. Sumptuously. Yeah, sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores and the desiring to and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores, and it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeing, seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in the flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receiveth the good things, and likewise Lazarus the evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. Okay. Come on, church. There's going to be a day Amen. when we get there that we, we go one or two places we're going to go. It's going to be heaven or Amen. hell, and we got a decision to make. That's why I changed the title to this message this morning. That decision is our decision, and it's not a hard decision. My, my, my. It says, but Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime received, received thy good things, and likewise Lazarus the evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. That would come from tents. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house, for I have five brethren that may, that he may testify unto, unless they, unto them, unless they also come into this place of torment. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. You know, we have the word of God to make it seated. We have the word of God. We had the prophets and, and all that back in Bible days. And, and uh, he Abraham is telling him, he said, You know, you got all the prophets out there. You got Moses. You got 
you got uh, all of them out there. Listen to what they're trying to tell you. You got a decision to make, and, and you need to make it before you pass on and, and get to this place where it's either going to be torment or it's going to be living with the king forever and ever. There's eternity somewhere. Right. Amen. Where are you going to spend it? It's a decision that we have to make that God has put in his word. He give us the tools to make that decision. All we got to do is follow that that he's given us in this word. Amen. Think about this. In Daniel chapter 3, it talks about the three Hebrew children. Right. They had a decision to make. You know, they could either serve Nebuchadnezzar's God or they could serve the one true God. They decided, their, with their decision, they decided to go ahead and serve God. Right. Even, when, even when Nebuchadnezzar had thrown them into the fiery furnace, what did they say? You can do what you want to, but we're still going to serve our God. Amen. Come on, somebody. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Abraham said there's a great gulf. Jesus is talking to him. He said, there's a great gulf yeah. between you and I. He said, we, there's no bridge, Sister White. There's no bridge. We can go across the water over there and go to the go across the bay there to the halfway bridge. There's a bridge to get there. Right. But there's no bridge. He's telling them, he said, it's a great gulf. There's no way across. He says, said, Lazarus can't come down to you. And you can't go up to him. You're stuck. You're stuck in that decision that you made in life. So you think about it this morning. We we make decisions every day on, on what we're going to do or, or where we're going to go. I asked my wife this morning, I said, where are we going to eat at? Amen. I, I want her to make a decision. Amen. You know, where are we going to eat at today? She said, well... I don't know, wherever you want to. That's that's what she always tells me. She don't ever make the decision. I have to. <laughs> but you know, they made that decision to to live his life and have anything and everything that he wanted. He made that decision. But he didn't realize he was he was making his place in hell. Come on, listen Man. to me this morning. He made his place in hell. When he opened up his eyes, in hell is what, the, what he's saying. He opened his eyes up in hell. So you got a decision to make today. Amen. You either going to open up your eyes in hell or you're going to open them up in heaven. And the decision is yours. Nobody but yours. And it's not a hard decision. I want to tell you Come this on. morning. It's a good decision to know that I'm going to make it. Right. My God is good. He has brought me through things. And, and I want to tell you this morning, I felt the power of God in this house so strong. I wanted to jump these benches. If I wasn't crippled and old and ugly, I'd have done it. But you know what? If God gets a hold of you, we can do all things through Christ who what? Who strengthens us. You know, Paul, Paul said, he said, I press forward. He, he said, I press on. What? Toward the mark. What's that mark? Heaven. The mark of the high calling, which is where? In heaven. Heaven. In who? Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. Yes. That's what he said. So we need to we need to make our decision sure and to know that we're where we're going. Brother Farrell, I know where I'm going. Amen. You know, because there's somebody up there waiting on me. Yes, you know, they made that decision long ago. My mother made a decision. My daddy made a decision. And it's your turn to make a decision on where you're going to spend eternity. You say, well, you know, I don't think eternity exists. You better begin to... Open your eyes up and listen to what this Word of God is saying to us this morning. You know, we can have the luxuries of this life right here on this earth. We can have the best of everything. But what about that old Lazarus that's sitting out there by the gate or sitting out there by the road 
holding his sign, begging for food and begging for crumbs off the table of the rich man. He was so bad he couldn't do nothing. He was laying there with sores all over him. And the, the Bible says that the dogs went up and just licked his sores. All he was doing was want some crumbs. He was wanting to be fed. I want to tell you this morning. Are you hungry? Are you wanting to be fed? Thank you, Lord. I'm, 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 I'm telling you this morning. You need to be fed. How are you going to get fed? By this word of God. This word of God. That's all the food that we need. That's our road map, Brother White. That's all we need is sustain life. You know, we could have all the riches and, and everything that the rich man had. But what good did it do him? What good did it do him? Do you ever figure out why the rich man made it to hell? and didn't make it to heaven. Because of his riches, he was selfish. He was selfish. He could have went out there. Lazarus was right there at his gate. He could have went out there and you know, give Lazarus food or whatever he needed. And he had the substance to do that. Amen. But he didn't do it. He was selfish. Where did it wind him up? That decision that he made wound him up in hell. Then he said, you know, he said, I can't, Abraham told him, he said, Lazarus can't come and he can't give his finger anymore. He can't come. There's no way. There's a great gulf between y'all, between us and them. He said, but, he said, you, you had a chance. Your brothers have a chance to still listen and take heed what the prophets of old were saying, what Abraham, what Moses, what they were all saying. Amen. Sometimes we don't listen when the Lord speaks to us. Amen. The Bible says that he'll speak to us in a what? A small, still voice. He'll speak to us Amen. and he'll bring us through. Uh, over, over in Daniel, chapter 2 and I just said that about about the uh, three who three Hebrew children you know they they when they made that decision to to serve serve God they wouldn't gonna let nothing sway them right. you know but people today people today will stray away a little bit, you know, Brother White, and then they'll begin to let, let people sway them, turn them around, you know, and all. But in, in Daniel chapter 2, uh, go there with me if you will. <coughs> chapter 3, rather. Three. Three. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Chapter 3 in verses... Uh, well, let me put my glasses on and read. <laughs> Daniel chapter 3 in uh, let's go down to verse 15. Mm -hmm. So now if you be ready that any that at any time you hear the sound which I have you lost it. <laughs> now if you be ready that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and December, said, and all of this music fall down and worship the image which I have made well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast into the cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of your hand, out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us out of the fiery furnace. Now listen to me this morning. 
Listen carefully. Our God is able to deliver us out of every situation yes, that the devil wants to put us in. I'm telling you, I'm not going to bow down to no idol. I'm not going to bow down to money. I'm not going to bow down to nothing that other than my God and my Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, which is in heaven waiting on us. Amen. What John 14 says, says that he's there and he's prepared a mansion for us, that where he is, there we may be also. So you think about it this morning. You want to be up there where God is, where Jesus is, where your loved ones is? Amen. Stacy, you got you got a daddy up there. You got a daddy here. But you know he's waiting on you. He made that decision whenever before he went on to be with the Lord. He made that decision, Brother White. My parents made that decision. Your parents made that decision before they went on to be with the Lord. But I want to tell you, we can make that decision, but we need to stick to it. We don't need to let the things of this world, the riches of this world, this money, this mammon, this stuff that the enemy got out here, we don't need to let that draw our attention away from God. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. I tell you, this is shouting right here. I, we, we need to open our eyes and realize just like those three Hebrew children, you know what? You can throw us in there, but our God will bring us out. Amen. What did old Nebuchadnezzar say whenever he threw them in there and they begin to walk around in that big old fiery Amen. furnace that done killed somebody before yes. they even got them in there, but yet they was in there walking around yes. and the Bible says they were loose walking around yes. in the fiery furnace. Yes. Cool of them. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We need to get loosed. Yeah. We need to get loosed. Yes. And begin to walk around in this fiery furnace yes. and let the let Nebuchadnezzar see. You know what he said? He said, Did I not throw three men in there? Yeah. He said, But I see four. Right. And the fourth one looked like what? Son the Son of God. <laughs> It didn't look like him, Brother White. It was him. Come on, somebody. Yes. My, my, my. I get nothing there. My toenails start to turn. Thank the Lord. Amen. You know, we, uh, we allow the enemy to, to bring us down and to tie us down to every situation yes. that we think that, you know, we can, we can help us that, that, that we think we can get through on our own. But that song says, Jesus, hold my hand. Yes. Yeah. I need thee every hour. Yep. Yes. Come on, somebody. We need him every hour, every day, every minute. Amen. Amen. You know, uh, we all have a decision to make in this life, Brother Farrell. Amen. And that decision is going to determine where we spend eternity. You know, Go with me to Hebrews. Not Hebrews, Romans. I'm sorry. <coughs> Romans 8 and 5. You know, we, we can... We can live in the spirit or we can live in the flesh. So we need to decide. We got a decision to make. Paul is saying here in chapter in, in chapter 8 and verse 5 of Romans, it says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, things of the spirit. For to be carnal minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is what? Life and peace. Life and peace. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. 
And so whenever we begin to walk in the flesh and let the flesh take over, that's a wrong decision. You see, we need to, we need to know that, that, that we're able to meet God one-on-one. -on -one. My Bible tells me that one day we'll what? We'll see him what? Face, face to face. Amen. Face to face. What you going to do? When you go before that throne of justice, what are you going to say when they start telling you, showing you your life, the things that you've done, the things that you've been through, those secret things that you think you got hidden from God? You can't hide nothing from God. He's omnipotent. That means he's everywhere. There's no place he can't be, brother wife. So when we get there and you say, well, you know, that door that you've had closed, that, that secret place that you think you've got hidden from me, it'll be revealed. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to look at you. He's either going to say what? Enter in or depart. But he give us the decision to make. He give us our own free will. To make that choice yeah. where we're able to enter in or depart. Sister White, I want to hear him say, enter in, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. That's what I want to hear. Why? Not just because all my friends, my, well, not all my friends, but all my loved ones that were saved went on to be with the Lord. What, what does uh, Romans 10 and 9 say? It says this. And it's a decision. He, he give us another decision to make. He said if you just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, thou shalt be saved. And we're talking about that, that God raised Jesus from the dead. Then you shall be saved. So it's a decision that we have to make. It's a decision. Life is full of decisions. You can make a good decision or you can make a bad decision, just like Paul's talking about in chapter 5 there of, of Romans. To be carnally minded is to be walking in the flesh. So we got we got a decision to make this morning, church. Matthew, Matthew 25 talks about talks about the uh, ten virgins. And I'm going to tell you, five of them made a good decision, but five of them made a bad decision. And this is life. We make good decisions, we make bad decisions. But the five that made the bad decision, they knocked on the door after the door was closed, Brother White. After the door was already closed, they were there knocking, trying to get back in to be with the bridegroom. But what happened? nothing. They were left out. The door, the Bible says the door was shut. Think about this. They lost out because of the decision that they made not to be ready. They were unprepared. They weren't ready to meet the bridegroom. Stand with me this morning. I feel like I said just about enough. You know, if, if we don't make that decision in our, in our hearts and in our lives, make that effort to be in the house of God, to hear the word of God, to teach people, to talk to people about God, what, what are we going, what, what, is, is God going to use us or, or what are we going to do? Now, I want to tell somebody this morning 
It's time. It's time to make your decision. Whether you're going to serve God or whether you're going to serve Baal. Elijah. Elijah asked him that same question. He said, who are you going to serve when he slew the prophets of Baal up on Mount Carmel? He said, who are you going to serve? you going to serve God or are you going to serve Baal? Then fire came down from heaven, Sister Carolyn, and consumed the altar. Elijah slew all the prophets of Baal right there on top of Mount Carmel. But then you got the enemy who wants to stick their head in. <laughs> oh, Jezebel, she stuck her head in, got mad because Elijah slew the prophets. Chased after him. Going to kill him. But you know what? We're just like Elijah sometimes. When we do something for God, we allow the enemy to tear us down, to torment us. The rich man, the Bible Jesus was saying that he was tormented in hell for eternity. You got a decision to make this morning. If you don't know the Lord, as your personal savior. <clears throat> you got a decision to make, a decision that will either lead you to heaven or to hell. There's only two places. So the decision is yours. The Bible says we can't do it on our own. <clears throat> We got to go through the Son to get to the Father. We have to make our peace with God, with Jesus, to get to the Father. So I'm talking to somebody this morning. I don't know where it's on that camera or here, but God put it in my heart. You got a decision to make, and it's got to be the right decision. Yes. Because if it's not, you're going to bust hell wide open. Yes. You know, you can walk up there to the bar and you can say, hey, give me that, little, that, that good old cold Budweiser. It's hot. I need it. You ain't seen hot until mm -hmm. you get to hell. Amen. Amen. That Budweiser, mm -hmm. that liquor, it'll send you straight to hell. It'll make you do things that you don't want to do against God. It'll, it'll, it, you'll, get so uh, habit forming to it that it'll, that it'll just turn you in to something that the enemy wants you to be. But I always go back to my, my scripture. Mm -hmm. 1 John 4 and 4. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. So I want to tell you this morning, make the right decision. God loves you and he'll help you through every situation that you're in. You know the old devil, he, he put things on me when I had this cancer on my neck and everything, you know. He said, well, that's it, son, you're going to die. <clears throat> Brother White, it worried me for a little while, yeah. you know, until God gave me peace about it. Why? Because I made a decision to take that junk that the enemy had and put it in the hands of God. Amen. Amen. So you think about it this morning. You make that decision. You put it in God's hand and let him take care of it. Amen. These altars are open. If you're here and you need, you need prayer, you come and we'll lay hands on you. And I always quote, James chapter 5, you know, that we'll anoint them with oil and we'll pray fervent prayer. Because it says a fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. We're not righteous by no means, but God uses us. Yes. He works through us. 
So if you have a need this morning, these altars are open. But think about this. If you don't come, you think about this. You make a decision in your heart right now to serve God or to serve Balaam, as Elijah said. What 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 did Joshua say? Twenty four and fifteen. For me and my house. You see, he made a decision. He said, For me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. We'll wait a few minutes. If you have that need, come and we'll, we'll lay hands on you to, and we'll pray for you. If not, I want you to come up here. We're going to pray for Brother Farrell that the Lord will just keep giving him the strength that he needs. You know, this man pushed this morning. <coughs> Sister Carolyn, he made a decision that he wanted to be in the house of the Lord. <coughs> he pushed, like Paul said. He pressed on. That was a good decision, Brother Farrell. I think so. It was a good decision. God loves you. Let's just pray for Brother Farrell. Let me anoint him with this oil. We used to be so mean. We ought to just pull the whole bottle on. <laughs> <laughs> I've got short hair now. <laughs> yeah, but, but one day, listen to me. One day, Farrell made a decision. I did. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else need prayer this morning before we let Brother White dismiss us? Oh, well, I'm going to get a touch anyway. I'm, I'm, I know it keeps complicating life, but I still have to keep going and keep it on whatever to give me strength. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, well if, if, we don't, if we don't keep on, then, then we're going to lose out. Right. Yeah. And we're not, I'm not a loser. <laughs> I'm not a loser. We're not losing. Father, right now, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. You see, Sister Wife, God, you feel the way, God. Lord, you know every need, God, that she has. You know that need, God, that rests in her heart today, Lord. So, God, we just ask you, Lord, that you would touch this and you would minister right now, God, to that need, Lord. God, as we lift her up right now, Father. 
Lord, Amen. never be able to touch God, to heal of that God this morning, God. And you would just strengthen her, God, in this walk with you, Lord. God, you would give her the heart to make each and every decision, God, to serve and to do what you want her to do, Lord, this morning, God. And we pray you, Lord. Strengthen her today, God. Strengthen her today, God. Strengthen her right now, Lord. In the name of Jesus, Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God. We pray, God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, yes. We got a decision to make. Well, be back tonight at five o'clock this afternoon. Come expecting something from the Lord. Is invite somebody. Bring somebody with you. Let them know that we have church. Brother White. Father God, we thank you so much for the word we received this morning, God. Let it feed our souls, God. And also, as we go out of here and meet with other folks around and about, God, let it be some word that we may be able to tell them about, God, in each one of these messages we hear, God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray that you give Thank each you and every one pray. of them the strength to be back with us tonight, God, and listen to the word yes. and be able to take and, and uh, deliver it to another soul out right there. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.